de Botis abor ina Nuestra Señora de Peña Francia. Greetings of peace and joy in abundance from the Diocese of Vera. In the life of the Church, our Lord Jesus Christ is the main protagonist. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He grew up in age, wisdom, and grace in a family. In view of such historical fact, the history of the Church passes through a family. The traditional family was regarded as a permanent unit containing a married couple who usually came from the same cultural and religious background and their children with father playing the role of breadwinner and the mother that of homemaker and caretaker of children which the couple jointly brought into the world. In this light, we could say that the traditional Christian family used to demonstrate most of these characteristics. Since the Second Vatican Council, there have been signs indicating that many conventions regarding the traditional family have not changed or have even abandoned. The tide of divorce is rising. Many are now joining the bandwagon of interfaith marriages or mixed marriages. Cohabitation is now trending. We now have the single parent families. Families of interfaith marriages, families of mixed marriages, migrant families. These are termed by sociologists as non-traditional families. Today, the family is by no means a static unit forever set in one particular form. We are now confronted with the realization of the many problems and challenges facing families today. In many ways, as a church, we speak in terms of the Christian family. The family is a community of love and of life made up of a complex of interpersonal relationships, married life, fatherhood, and motherhood, filiation, and fraternity, to which each human person is introduced into the human family and into the family of God which is the Church. The Directory for Catechesis issued by the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the New Evangelization further states that the family is a proclamation of faith in that it is the natural place in which faith can be lived in a simple and spontaneous manner. It has an unique privilege, and that is transmitting the gospel by rooting it in the context of profound human values. Foremost, the church proclaims the gospel through the family. The core of that gospel message that there is no other name on earth 
and which the world would be saved, but not of the Lord Jesus. And that is what is most beautiful, most excellent, most appealing, and at the same time, most necessary. This message has to occupy the center of all evangelizing activity. In turn, the family proclaims the gospel. As a domestic church founded on the sacrament of marriage that also has missionary dimensions, the Christian family takes part in the church's mission of evangelization and is therefore an agent of catechesis. The work of handing on the faith to children in the sense of facilitating its expression in growth helps the whole family in its evangelizing mission. It naturally begins to spread the faith to all around them, even outside of the family circle. In addition to its natural service of childbearing, the family is therefore called to contribute to building up the Christian community and to bear witness to the gospel in society. The ministry of evangelization and catechesis of the church of the home is rooted in and derives from the one mission of the church and is ordained to the upbuilding of the body of Christ. It must remain an intimate communion and collaborate responsibly with the other evangelizing and catechetical activities present and at work in the ecclesial community at the diocesan and parochial levels. In his apostolic exhortation, Familiaris Consortio, Pope St. John Paul II defines the family as a living image and historical representation of the mystery of the church. The church as a mother that gives birth to, educates and builds up the Christian family by putting into effect in its regard the saving mission which she has received from her Lord. By proclaiming the word of God, the church reveals to Christian family its true identity, what it is and should be according to the Lord's plan. By celebrating the sacraments, the church en enriches and it strengthens the Christian family with the grace of Christ for its sanctification to the glory of the Father. By continuous proclamation of a new commandment of love, the Church encourages and guides the Christian family to the service of love so that it may imitate and relieve the same self-giving and sacrificial love that the Lord Jesus has for the entire human race. In turn, the Christian family is crafted into the mystery of the church to such a degree as to become a sharer in, in its own way in the saving nation proper to the church. By virtue of the sacrament, Christian married couples 
and parents in their state and way of life have their own special gift among the people of God. For this reason, they do not only receive the love of Christ and become a safe community, but they are also called upon to communicate Christ's love to their brethren that's becoming a saving community. In this way, while the Christian family is a fruit in sign of the supernatural fecundity of the church, it stands also as a symbol, witness, and participant of the church's motherhood. The Christian family is called upon to take part actively and responsibly in the mission of the church in a way that is original and specific by placing itself in what it is and what it does as an intimate community of life and love at the service of the church and society. Since the Christian family is a community in which the relationship are renewed by Christ through faith and the sacraments, the family's sharing in the church mission should follow a community pattern. The spouses together as a couple, the parents and children as a family must lead their service to the church and to the world. They must be of one heart and soul and faith through the shared apostolic zeal that animates them and through their shared commitment to works of service in the ecclesial and civil communities. The Christian family also builds up the kingdom of God in history through everyday realities that concern and distinguish its state of life. It is thus in the love between husband and wife and between the members of the family that Christian family's participation in the prophetic priestly and kingly mission of Jesus Christ and of His Church finds expression and realization. Therefore, life and love constitute the nucleus of the saving mission of the Christian family in the Church and for the Church. The Second Vatican Council recalls this fact when it writes, Families will share their spiritual riches generously with other families too. Thus, the Christian family, which springs from marriage as a reflection of a loving covenant, uniting Christ with the Church, and as participation in that covenant will manifest to all people the Savior's living, the Savior's living presence in the world and the genuine nature of the Church. This the family will do by the mutual love of the spouses, by their generous fruitfulness and their loving way in which all the members of the family work together. Having laid the foundation of the participation of Christian family in the church's mission, it is now time to illustrate 
its substance in reference to Jesus Christ as prophet, priest, and king. Three aspects of a single reality. True family catechesis. By presenting the Christian family as first a believing and evangelizing community. Second, as a community in dialogue with God. And third, as a community at the service of man. As believing an evangelizing community, have you ever proclaimed the Lord Jesus to other families? In what way? How often? As a community in dialogue with God, have you ever, as a family, talked to Him? How often do you pray the family rosary? What family devotion do you have? As a community at the service of man, what apostolic works in your parish is your family engaged in? How often do you miss any of receiving corporeal works of mercy? To feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to give shelter to the traveler, to visit the sick, to visit the impression, to bury the dead. My brothers and sisters, let me end with a sad note. Most catechesis is done by church personnel or volunteers. Many parents leave this task to priests, sisters, and parish catechists, and they do not see themselves as having a vital role to play in handing on the faith which is theirs. The certain baptized persons exercise the ministry of transmitting the teaching of the apostles and evangelists in a more organic and stable form related to different situations in life. Yet, the church counts on you. Be a catechist to your family and other families. Be a witness catechist. Miss La Signora di Pina Francia, e Pamibi Mokami. Viva la Virgen! Viva la Virgen! Viva la Virgen!